Today, I want to have a simple conversation with you about how you can manage your communications, make sure that it works for you as opposed to managing you, if that makes sense. Let's get into it. Yo, and what's up, tribe? Hi, hope you're doing well this Monday. I wanna to talk to you about how you can manage your communication. We're probably gonna focus mostly on email today, but you know, we'll talk about what's appropriate in other venues as well. Okay, so when it comes to communication, if you're not managing your communication properly, you might be missing emails, you might be uh, miscommunicating in your emails, you may be using email when you shouldn't be using email. Marshall McClellan, is a big wig in the communication space and he used to say the medium is the message and if you're using the wrong medium are you sending the wrong message so that means are you using email when you should be using the phone are you using text when you should be using email think about it I can give you a great example. There was a situation where I needed something done from one of our team members on the technology side. And so I sent an email and I intentionally did not say uh, exactly what I was looking to do because I knew that there would be a no coming out of it right away. And all I wanted to say is I've got a project idea I wanna discuss with you. I wanna discuss feasibility with you, discuss being the key word. And of course, there was starting to be a back and forth. Well, what are you looking to do? Uh, bah, bah. Uh, of course, what ended up happening from there is they said, we can't do that. And I'm like, hey, stop. I would prefer to have a meeting about this so that we can actually talk about the technical capabilities of what we can do and what we can't do. Turns out we had the meeting. We can do it. It is actually an easy thing. And so it was all about that medium. So let me try and be a little bit more clear because I think that I was explaining something, trying to be vague because it's something that has to do with my university job, not this but I think I can use basic algebra on this one. What I wanted to do was project D. Project D was consisting of projects A, projects B, and project C, which I was pretty sure we were capable of doing. But had I asked for D, they probably would have said, no, that's too big of a deal. So I needed a meeting to say, we can do A, right? And then we can do B, and then we can do C. So then, D sounds like it's very feasible. It's essentially a sales technique. Uh, if you want to think about it as a leadership technique or anything of that like, basically you want to show that, hey, this big project isn't really that challenging after all, and here's how we can get there. And obviously it worked. What should have been a meeting ended up going into an email. And some people, they just don't want to go to meetings. They're worried that the meeting itself could have been an email. The difference between the two is if you need to actually have a discussion, think about using voice for that particular discussion. If you need to just disseminate information, then there you go. That's what an email is for. And sometimes text is great for small conversations, but not an email. So think about it. Maybe a quick text is appropriate to ask someone if they're available for a quick phone call as opposed to an email because an email may get uh, buried in an inbox. Think about should a text be an email? Should an email be a text? Should an email be a meeting, a voice call? What should it be? Make sure you're using the appropriate frame of reference. And one of the things I like to think of is, I think of email just like I would have thought of memos or old school communications back in the day, not a conversation like sometimes happens now. So with all that being said, what about email? Because emails these days have gotten to be really crazy. Now, especially if you're like me, if you have an older email address, I have two very old emails. I've got an email that goes back all the way to 2003 and I've got my university email which actually goes back to 2010. Well those emails over time have either gotten on lists or I've subscribed to stuff and there's a ton of junk and so it's taken me a while to manage that particular email system. So some tips and tricks for you to manage your email system might be if you're like me and you use Apple Mail, well I use smart folders. There are basically a filtering system that doesn't mess with your master email box. On Outlook, you can set up rules and folders so that email goes to the appropriate place, or you can have a workflow where you're dragging some people's emails into the appropriate folder so that you can find them later. Another thing that I did, uh, and I did it this summer, was I basically aggressively unsubscribed. 
I looked at it, if it's something I haven't had any value from in the past year or maybe even six months, unsubscribe. I gotta tell you, there have been a few things that I've unsubscribed three or four times to, but eventually it starts to clear you out of those databases. It's, I'm still getting some junk, uh, some companies have made it really hard to unsubscribe, but my inboxes have gotten a lot more manageable as a result. Another thing you might want to think about is when do you actually do your email? Cal Newton is actually big on this. Think about when you're spending time on email. And as you're doing this, individuals that you email frequently will probably pick up that you're not going to be the type of person who immediately responds if it's an emergency. They may pick up the phone or use the text message as appropriate. So what that means is scheduling it in your day, blocking that email time out. If you're trying to multitask, well, got bad news for you. The research says that multitasking doesn't work because what happens is as you're switching from task to task, you're losing focus, you're losing workflow, you're losing mental flow on those particular tasks. So quit your email when you're actually doing something important and decide how often you want to do it. For me, I got two types of cadences that I use when I'm working with email. Either I check it in the morning after I've worked out, and then I check it in the evening before I leave. Sometimes I'll have a block maybe in the middle of the day, or if I'm a little bit more task oriented for the day, I might do task, email, task, email. Either way, quit the email, make sure you're not getting notifications from that email because you've quit it and you should be good. Another thing you may want to think about is removing email notifications from your phone. You see, those ding, ding, dings, uh, either you're going to have a hit of dopamine, ooh, someone is emailing me, or you're going to have a, a feeling of dread, oh crap, what's that about now? So if you can just remove those notifications, that is a great way of handling email. I've actually deleted the email application from my phone for the university, and if I do feel the need to check it because I do know that maybe there is an important response coming, I use the web interface over the phone and that works fine and it doesn't send me any notifications. As for my professional emails outside of the university, they also, except for two specific emails that are very rarely sent to, there's no notifications. And so that is if a friend emails me, that's not going to be a big deal. That's something that I may want and chances are my friends aren't gonna email me in the middle of the day. Usually they're, they're emailing me in the evening to maybe make plans later. You might be saying, don't your friends text you? Uh, we're talking about friends that maybe I haven't contacted in, in a bit. Okay, Tribe, so hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully you can see that you can make communication work for you instead of you working for your communication. I promise you, your networks will adjust to whatever your style of communication happens to be your style of email. Uh, it's, remember though, it's important to quit it. It's important to be restful. If you remember that video on taking a rest, well, part of that again is shutting down that email and making sure that you're compartmentalizing it when you're actually checking it. Hey Tribe, I hope you enjoyed this video and you found some use or some wisdom in it. If you've been coming here for a little bit, hey, why don't you hit the subscribe button, bang that notification bell, and if you did like this video, click the like button. In the meantime, I hope that you're a little bit better today than you were yesterday, and I'm looking forward to you being a little bit better tomorrow than you were today. Take care.